I'm Edward Clydesdale Thompson. Uh, I'm a visual artist from Scotland, together with Priscilla Fernandez. Uh, I'm head of fine art um, there in Arnhem. Land is a topic that keeps returning uh, in my work. First, in bodies of work that looked um, at, let's say, how humanity has controlled uh, landscape. So within uh, g gardens, uh, landscape design, landscape architecture, the way that we um, as humans project um, our own values, um, desires, loves um, on, onto land um, in the way that we construct it, the way we look at it, the way we see it. Um, it's something that, 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 that is Land is a is a land is a uh, a narrative that 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 can talk about all kinds of uh, things from from very concrete um, political ideology uh, to more romantic uh, ideas of um, certain aesthetic values or social values, um, and so for me, it's a kind of a carrier um, through which I can address uh, very particular pr pressing topics. Humanity has always controlled uh, land, has always manipulated the landscape um, in order to um, create better circumstances. So do all plants and animals. <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> That's what life does. It, it, it tries to um, uh, create the best circumstances for itself. So I don't think there's anything uh, wrong with that. I think that it's not always the best choices that have been made in terms of um, in the way in which we control landscape. One of the, the topics we're talking about, of course, is forestry in Sweden. And um, throughout the 70s uh, and the 80s, they sprayed a defoliation agent um, over um, the forests from airplanes in, in uh, massive quantities to kill all the leaf trees. So this was a um, this was a choice that is, is very clearly a very bad choice. Um, and it comes from an ideological perspective. They strongly believed they were doing the best thing for the land by killing on the leaf trees because um, the pine trees were more economically efficient. Um, so while, um, while it was a terrible idea and a very bad thing, and it, it did stem from a, 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 a let's say, a, a strong ideological um, belief that they were caring for the forests. My, my, my practice is, is often uh, research-based. I go through long uh, research trajectories uh, towards making not, not really one work, but a, a body of, of works that surround that topic. And I was invited to do a residency in Iaspis in Stockholm. Um, traveling there before I left, um, I was thinking about what I wanted to do in Sweden um, and of course the, the country as a, as a forest country um, has struck me. Um, my interest in, in land and landscape um, led me to, to think well in what way let's say is the industrial forest because I read that Sweden was 80% covered in industrial forest. Uh, in what way did that connect um, to let's say different uh, ideologies and beliefs um, that I had been perhaps studying before in relation to uh, more continental European landscapes. Um, and what really, um, my, real fir my first question is in what way, let's say, did the increasing pace of the beat of industrial capitalism um, uh, relate or dissonate uh, with the growth of a tree, the kind of the growth along a, a slow rhythm of a lunar cycle, and, and these two rhythms, in what way did they um, counteract with each other? When I first arrived in Stockholm, um, I began to research the subject by reading um, various articles. Um, there is a writer, Masha Sheremba, uh, who had uh, recently published um, a fascinating series of articles. Um, about the Swedish forests in uh, one of the national newspapers. And these articles had exposed 
um, for the a more general public, uh, much of what had been happening in Sweden behind closed doors, um, and much of, let's say, the the manipulation, perhaps even corruption, of the large forest companies. So it was really a kind of an expose of the forest, which until that point perhaps had been a sort of a national symbol, a symbol of pride. So I interviewed him, I went to visit him, talked to him about it. Um, from there I started travelling north um, to where many of these forests are, um, visiting um, different universities uh, to interview lecturers uh, who study forestry, um, visiting um, the world's largest pine nursery, uh, interviewing the, uh, the, the lead chemist that works there, um, interviewing various foresters. Um, I went on an expedition with a, um, a forest activist um, who was trying to save a particular forest. Um, so it was really a, a, a period of, of traveling around the country and going on expeditions, uh, interviewing different people, trying to, in a way, trace something of what had been written in this article, but try to see it for myself, try to understand um, what, what was happening uh, there in relation to, let's say, the, the land use. What I discovered was that the forest um, had been uh, uh, a site, let's say, a kind of a, a, almost like a kind of a symbolic object upon which so many different values had been placed within the society. Um, and this, of course, uh, to me is, is fascinating and it relates to art in the same way that we we place value, we place ideas, we, play, we, we embed things, uh, emotions in certain objects and, and so for me the idea of embedding an emotion, embedding a, an ideology, embedding a belief in a forest was really fascinating, uh, in the tree, in, in embedding a, a belief in a tree and, and so um, for me uh, what I discovered was the, the, let's say, all the different levels in which that had been done from that almost the the, 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 not quite religious, but the kind of secular um, version of religion, perhaps the idea that the forest is a place that you would go to uh, to think about the sublime or something that's larger than yourself, um, to the um, to the let's say the um, the forest activists whose whole identity is surrounded by the idea of um, preserving the forest. Um, to the scientists who try to uncover the, the way that the Sami lived historically in the forest um, through understanding culturally modified trees uh, and, and reading into them uh, different ways of life. So it was about um, f looking at all these different societal connections uh, that were surrounded by this one thing, the forest. Well, the fire history. I mean, they got data on that and to see that, that the, sort of the natural fire could actually cause that pattern. So, so there are some hypotheses saying that probably humans already from you know, the first day when the trees <laughs> migrated in here <laughs> after the Ice Age has actually played a role in, in the fire history. And, and, and for me that, that fascinates me. That means that this natural landscape that we have around us are also a, a, a human construct. And so they have done genetic of studies of on uh, these vastly yeah. different forest, from what they're doing to the forest now. So the it's genetic not variation forest, can be sort of more even lower in the, have, in the old forest, sort of forest than it is in, in the modern, the modern forest. It's a combination it's of um, to say that it's an area forestry and the young age. Because the forestry forms, you plant trees and then you thin evenly. And you first you do a pre-commercial thinning uh, when they are about this big, and then when they are this big, you do a thinning, and then you not do another thing, and you take away all um, uh, all the variation, <laughs> and then you get trees evenly spaced, evenly growing, and so on. The process was a long process, so from the um, maybe half a dozen interviews. Um, I created a, first a sound work, um, which uh, was a combination of 
of these different uh, interviews together with um, sound recordings I had made um, along the, the journey. These were um, inspired by the idea of North by Glenn Gold, mm -hmm. um, which is a, a beautiful uh, journey, a uh, kind of fic quasi fictional journey uh, north uh, in Canada that, the, that Glenn Gold, the pianist, made, but he made it for Canadian radio, where he interviews people about um, the idea of Northmanship, what it is to live in the North. Um, and in this piece, Glenn Gold uh, overlays different interviews with sounds on top of each other in, um, in a not quite Bach-like way. He's known for, for playing Bach, of course. And, and so this, it's very layered. And I tried to make something that was a sort of a homage to that work. It's one of my favorite pieces. Um, but instead of the idea of North, it's the idea of the forest. Mm -hmm. After making the sound piece, I did a, a show in, in Stockholm. And I decided to um, take um, let's say these different ideological positions. On the one hand, um, the economic way of, of looking at the forest. Um, on the other hand, let's say the, um, the, the scientific way of looking at it. Um, the more existential kind of forester uh, way of looking at it. So it's about a, about a need. Um, the environmental way of looking at it. Um, and the uh, and the kind of historical Sami way of understanding the forest. Five different ways of understanding it. And I tried to translate that into a series of, of characters, into a series of, um, uh, let's say, uh, personalities. Mm -hmm. And those personalities I then tried to make um, sculptures from. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the process, um, the process went uh, in, in, back and forth between the, the, the narrative mm -hmm. uh, that I overlaid from these interviews, mm -hmm. um, the enormous numbers of photographs and imagery that I had uh, taken from there, and I would use the photographs at, as, um, as, as placeholders or stand-ins for some of the ideas that I had un unraveled through the interviews. Um, and then I would cut and paste um, the, 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 the collage out of these different um, photographs um, and that created a series of five, maybe seven uh, collages, mm -hmm. uh, each of them embodying different, these different characters. Mm -hmm. um, from those characters I created a series of sculptures uh, that I then showed in, in uh, Marabu Park in, um, in, a, in a large exhibition I had there. Um, these sculptures are a hybrid, let's say, of um, uh, material and object and character. Um, they sort of silently narrate this, this story. Um, the sculptures are, um, are collage-like in their use of materials. Um, so there are bits of wood and tires and metal and real objects collaged together. After the uh, show in Marabu, I um, was wanting to give these sculptures a certain a voice. I wanted them to communicate together. I felt that there was, um, there was maybe too much lost in the silent narration of the sculptures, mm -hmm. and I wanted to bring back the very concrete narrative um, that I had been researching. So um, I decided uh, I wanted to write a, an opera. <laughs> and, uh, I, I, to, to, but through the process of making the opera, it became a play. Uh, also because there were a number of other artists I knew at the time that were also making operas. So I thought, OK, no, I'll go and drop that. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll make it a play instead. Um, and uh, so then these five characters uh, it come to life as, as five trees. Um, and the trees, um, let's say, live out this 500 year period in the course of an hour. Um, during which the, let's say, the forest is, has changed so much from, from being, um, uh, let's say, uh, a place where the, the, the Sami would live um, in a quite um, uh, a, a, a symbiotic relationship with the, with the trees, but also a symbolical one, where, where um, trees were bestowed with um, values such as, as, as medicinal values, but also uh, religious values. Um, there were faces carved in trees and that were 
they became gods they were prayed to um, through uh, let's say the industrialization of the forest uh, from the mid um, 18th century onwards um, through to the, the peak of industrialization in the 1960s and 1970s with uh, mass uh, clearings of trees, um, uh, deforestation um, by, by um, killing all the pine trees through defoliation agent um, to a period, uh, let's say, in the 90s until now where there's been a, a more of a scientific inquiry into the ecology of the forest and the different values in biodiversity. Um, so the play traces this 500, in fact the sculptures, all of it traces this 500 year period um, and, and attempts to um, unpick it in different ways. I was commissioned um, to do a show in the, uh, uh, the art museum in Malmö and I created a, a series of four wallpapers, uh, each one set in a different time period, um, in which I take the knowledge that I gathered from the research um, and I meet that with a, a second research that I did which was about the, the history of, of the aesthetic of wallpaper across that same period. And the wallpapers I use a lot of mono printing and there are bark rubbings that form part of the wallpaper, all kinds of, of very direct impact direct tracings because I've felt that this you get close to the material of the tree if you if you work with it in that way. It's always hard to gauge a reaction um, to a work. I, I think that um, in many cases uh, the, the reaction you get is, is um, much later or not at the time so it's not um, it's actually often very frustrating because the model through which um, we work in, in the art world is, is, is one, thank, frankly, of a throwaway economy mm -hmm. uh, in which we produce an enormous amount of work for very temporary shows. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this is something that I, um, partly through this research, which is very much to do with time, because the growth of a tree is very much about time, mm -hmm. Um, I've started to take much more seriously in my work and since this project I've spent much more time engaging deliberately, um, let's say in the economy of time of a project and trying to create projects that can stretch over longer periods. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that when you, when you show work uh, it kind of falls into a void and you, you, you wait for this echo to come back that it often never does. Of course I want to change the world with my work. I think that if you, if you don't want to do that, you, you probably... I don't know why you're doing this then, and <laughs> investing all this energy. But uh, increasingly I, I think that it's not the, necessarily always the final result uh, that creates the biggest impact. So I try to treat the whole process of, of what I do, the whole process of what I'm making, as part of that, um, um, where the impact of, of the work is. I like to find out things that I don't know. Uh, I like to do. I like to never do the same thing twice. So my work is always different from project to project. For me, uh, meeting these different scientists, learning um, about their um, study was fascinating. But then translating that into um, things that I had also no experience of doing: writing a play, um, casting these sculptures. It's all about. Um, uh, finding processes uh, through which I can learn and, uh, and enjoy and, uh, uh, and it's that joy of making, uh, that joy of creating is, is, is what drives me.